Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the FanVester Podcast. I'm your host, Sunny Burns. And I'm your co-host, Sun Marie Burns. Today, we are talking about a subject we don't talk about too much on the FanVester Podcast, parenting. Parenting. I don't know. We, we avoid the subject, I guess. I feel <laughs> like we're still very much in the midst of being parents, even though our eldest is five, going to turn six next year. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, but we've been getting a lot of questions from friends and people that we know about how we go about doing the things that we do as a family and you know a lot of times we think oh well it's just what we do but um we've come to realize that some of these things are not so common or things that parents shy away from when they have small kids um and and we just feel like our life is so much richer for these activities we do together as a family but they perhaps are a little uncommon not that the activities are uncommon, but maybe the way Just we go about it. doing it with young kids. And I feel like our lifestyle has always been pretty active, pretty adventurous. And even after having kids, we never really slowed down. You know, I think four months after our eldest was born, when he was four months old, we took him um, camping. Mm-hmm. I think I was at like Assateague Island with the horses. Right. We were just camping on the sand. Um, and then I think a month, few months after that, we were uh, took a week camping trip at a family camp in a cabin. So that was a little more comfortable. Yeah, but but yeah, we we didn't stop the activities we loved doing once we had young children. I feel like that's something I'll, I see a lot of families do is they kind of limit themselves as to what they think they can now do as a family because they have young children oh i used to love to go on bike rides but i can't do it anymore because i have small kids i used to love going hiking but i can't do it anymore or i used to love going camping um, but i can't do it anymore and i feel like i've heard that repeatedly road trips i love going on road trips and vacation but i have young kids i can't do it anymore um And so we wanted to talk about those things today and talk about how we handle those activities that we love doing and how we manage to do it together as a family with our young kids. So without further ado, let's get to the show. You're listening to the FamVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. So one thing I think we do very differently is we rarely ever use a stroller. Mm -hmm. Most, um, well, at least most Americans, they're always using their stroller wherever they go, here and at, they're lugging their stroller in their car. I don't, usually we don't have a stroller in our car. And then not to say we use a stroller on occasion, but it's very rare. I feel like we use it like maybe two or three times this summer. It's more of an intentional decision to say, I'm going to use the stroller today. So I'm going to load it in the car Mm -hmm. rather than it just being there and kind of an assumption that, oh yeah, I got a stroller today. And a lot of times strollers become like this uh, moving warehouse of baby items (laughs) that parents rely on you know you need to have this you need to have that you need to have snacks you need to have water you need to have all these things to make your child happy and i guess for us we wanted more flexibility more freedom and you know our kids not to need to um i don't know not to grow this reliance on having this abundance of items at hand and also just uh a seat to sit in whenever they feel like right that especially and they you know once you have multiple kids they're all fighting for that stroller seat and yes you can get a two three seater stroller too but then that just gets more and more cumbersome especially as you go in and out of stores with those kind of things yeah we were concerned about that with our first so we bought a double stroller Uh, it was a convertible stroller that could hold the car seat and then later two children and even you could buy an attachment for a third but honestly speaking, we use it so infrequently, it wasn't as important of a staple item as we thought it was going to be for us. And that's mainly because of our choices. We have found that we much prefer using baby carriers over uh, the stroller. Right, for the infants. But once they get to walking age, mm-hmm. we like them to walk. 
Right. And it's kind of just, I guess, something we expect from them. And, you know, we start hiking with them when... As soon as they can walk. As soon as they can walk. They just start... We did it with our eldest. We just took him hiking. And sure, we kept it short, like a half mile hike. But he was walking the whole thing. And, you know, we would take nightly walks after dinner around the neighborhood, just getting him used to walking. Just because we like to take nightly walks. And he just got used to walking. And, you know, now our kids are fast hikers. You know, our five-year-old, our three-year-old, they can go into the woods for miles at a time. I don't know. We've done extensive hikes with them, you know, extensive being like six-mile hikes, things like that. We just did a very challenging hike a couple weekends ago, Mount Tamami. Yeah. In the Poconos. Very steep. Um, That was probably six Very rocky. Maybe a little less than six, but very, very steep. The kids were doing fantastic on it. We maybe carried the three-year-old up. Very short. Very bit. short. He was but like starting to fall all over the place. But <laughs> he was getting tired. <laughs> he, he, they did good. Uh, one tip for uh, starting out hiking: bring some kind of incentive, some kind of reward, something to distract them. It's been getting cold here, so I bought like a forty pack of hot hands. Uh, those things you shake up and they warm your hands, and the kids love that. Um, um, you know, just give them some hot hands and like, oh, you know, hot and uh, they it hold distracts it in them their from hands the cold. and put them in their pockets and they enjoy that. But even like a long hike, you know, think about like what we love to do is just buy a big bag of chips and then halfway through when, when you know, when, oh, I'm tired, blah, 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 just break out the chips, have a little break or even walk alongside with the chips. Yeah, we find that we like to um, be flexible and free in our choice of trails you know a lot of times you start on a trail and it may seem nice and smooth going that could handle stroller wheels but then it may turn into something perhaps less ideal maybe some mud or rocks or so forth we recently did a hiking outing with a few families and um and there were strollers uh amongst our group and we we came across the path and halfway through there was like a creek and a mud and some rocks and all of a sudden we had to stop there and turn around and go back because the strollers couldn't handle the terrain and you know there's two ways to approach that either you get a stroller that can handle rougher terrain like a jogging stroller but even that has its limitations or you opt to do these activities without strollers in which you don't have to worry about running into those kind of snags. So we've just found that we feel a lot more free in our choices when hiking, when we aren't, um, you know, held back by a stroller. And our kids have not really um, struggled with that. They yeah. enjoy the hiking. They keep up and, you know, it's it's enough of a hike for us and it's certainly plenty of a, a hike for them. Um, but it it isn't um, it isn't an item we miss for right. sure. Right, and I think you know kids do what is expected of them. You know, for some parents, you know, that's a ridiculous idea to expect your child to walk four, your five year old to walk four miles in the woods. But to us, it's just what we expect, and you know, they they take it and they earn it and they own it. Now, granted, if you are used to and your child is accustomed to a stroller. Today, you can't go out tomorrow and expect them to do a mile and a half hike with you and be okay with that. It's something that you have to definitely gently work up to and, of course, see what your particular child can handle and what they can handle. And You don't want to push anyone to a point that they're, you know, crying or unhappy with the experience because you want this outdoor time to be like bonding family time, Mm -hmm. not... Not a suffering, miserable time that nobody enjoys, parent or child. So keep that in mind, you know, if you're overly ambitious and trying to oust the stroller and want to go for a hike tomorrow, take it slowly, go Mm -hmm. for a small walk. and Walk around the block after dinner. The more you do it, the more common it is, the more normal it is, and the kids adjust to that, and they come to really appreciate and love expending their energy that way, you know. I mean, a lot of times we're going outdoors to let the kids burn off energy if you're pushing them around in a stroller they're not really burning energy you're burning energy getting wiped out and they're still full of energy by the time you get back right right (laughs) yeah so i guess uh, recently our configuration with three kids is you know the five-year-old and three-year-old are just walking sometimes we hold their hand but most of the time they're just you know on their own on the trail walking we have the little one in an ergo baby front carrier facing forward looking at the world and if it's a longer hike i'll bring my camelback uh just a small backpack um usually throw in like two diapers some wipes 
um and a couple of up, snacks it's a couple of snacks and then uh fill up the water pouch so it has like a water reservoir a bladder can hold close to a gallon of water and a little bite valve so the kids love that <laughs> they drink more water when we hike just because they want to drink from the bite valve spigot <laughs> on the uh the bladder so uh yeah that's good and and kaylee even likes chewing on it the little one the nine month old right um and and it's worked out really well for us someone recently asked us when we go hiking, are we all outfitted in professional hiking gear? Do we get our kids hiking boots and walking sticks? Short answer to that is no. Um, we aren't big advocates of thick hiking sold gears shoes. And, and thick soled shoes. I'm hiking a lot of times in flip flops, actually, especially in the summer. I think he's crazy, <laughs> but <laughs> that's him. Um, I, I think closed toed shoes are definitely better just because of the rocks and so forth that you're on, but. Um, it is surprising what you can hike in with what you have. You know, we we climbed Mount Fuji in minimalist uh, um, New Balance minimuses. New Balance minimus sneakers, and yeah, they were great for that. Um, and I was certainly glad I didn't have heavy duty hiking boots for that excursion. It's surprising, like when you look at the shoes that are being offered for children, their soles are so thick. You know, and their feet are so small already, so they're like platform shoes for the kids. I feel like it makes them like top heavy and easy to topple. So I was very intentional about the footwear we bought our children. And especially those shoes are heavy. So I feel like it makes a big difference, um, especially on these little guys, you know, who are just training their muscles and getting their balance uh, correct. I, I, we really liked... Yeah, we really like this thing called skitters, which was basically just a sock with a rubber, sole. rubberized sole on it. So super lightweight, super flexible. They felt like they were almost a barefoot. So I think that helped a bit. It um, helped our kids learn to walk really well from a very young age. We've always had eager beavers when it came to walking. Our kids just loved starting out walking practically from when they turned one. Um, and we found that giving them a very flexible a shoe with a thinner sole but with decent grip allowed them to get better at walking a lot quicker yeah. and it made walks and hikes more fun for them because they weren't you know stumbling over these clumsy shoes because if you think about it a lot of the toddler shoes like you said the sole is so thick in relation to the size of the right. shoe if you took that proportion and put it on an adult shoe, you'd have this massive lead weight on your foot, you know, mm -hmm. which... You which they won't move, too, because it's You're so like thick. like walking on blocks, right? Yeah. So our, our Pay choice has been... Pay attention to that. Most, a lot of the big shoe companies are just making these huge platform shoes for little kids. So let's talk about camping. Uh, we probably went camping this past summer, like, a eight, ten dozen right. times. We went a lot of times. And we just had our newborn, you know, in January. So she's been camping that many, maybe a little less because I took the boys out ourselves a couple times. Um, I think we probably took her out when she was five four months, months, four months. Four or like five that. months we Just took her out. And, you know, um, it was in the summer, so it doesn't get too cold. So we weren't too worried. And we did, we have a two-person sleeping bag. So they zipped together and Sunray and I were in it. And we just had uh, Kaylee in between us. So that kept her nice and warm and cozy. And the boys were just sleeping to the left and right of us in their own little sleeping bags. And they really like camping. You know, I really recommend pick a nice, warm, dry day. There's nothing like camping in the rain. No one <laughs> likes that. No. Don't start off with a bad experience. I'm always paying close attention to the weather. Um, you know, making sure it's dry. That's that's key. And then build a nice fire. You know, cook over the fire. My son loves camping because he's like, yes, we're going to get chicken nuggets. You know, a nice <laughs> grill basket. Just throw some chicken nuggets in the grill basket. Throw some hot dogs too. Get, bring some buns, some baked beans that you cook over the fire. And then bring s'mores. You know, that's a great uh, capstone to the event to really make it a nice, enjoyable experience. Right. And the kids love it. You know, I find that, you know... Once your child's old enough to be, you know, resilient enough to take them out, like around five months or six months or so, um, you know, you could take them out for a one night camping outing. Don't do anything large. Yeah. Don't go for a week, three days, four days. Start with one night. Go out. Take it really low key. Don't don't, you know, be super ambitious. Just go camping and give it a try. Usually, you know, it takes it takes young children a few times to be okay with it, you know, or to, to understand what they're doing, I guess I should say. 
but it it isn't even that rough even with Kaylee I mean she fussed more than normal because it was an unfamiliar environment when we were trying to go to bed that evening but then she slept really well through the night and actually with our um, first son what we found was he was a really tough sleeper at home pretty much every single night and then we took him camping and he slept better than he ever slept before and we were yeah, like it must it be amazing. the fresh air and just the nature and maybe the nature sounds outside he just slept so well we're like we should spend every day camping if it if it turns into a night's sleep like this but we do find that that the fresh air really helps the children sleep well and then they wake up refreshed and you know just kind of almost in a calm when they're out in nature after a night sleeping in a tent it's a it really is revitalizing for the kids so just start young don't be don't be afraid you know we start when our kids are about half a year old and and they they enjoy it you know the baby I would say the first one or two times are that they need to get used to what they're doing but after that it's like oh we're camping again and they understand what it is and every single time you go they just come to like it more and more so that leads us on to the next question we've got, and that is that we do a lot of road trips. Our family loves road tripping. Some road trips are an hour, some are three hours, four hours, six hours, 13 hours, 19 hours, 21 hours. We've done it all. Um, so we, we run the gamut on road trips, always with our kids. And honestly... Well, we've never done 21 hours straight. We've done a break in the middle of the day. A break in the well, and we could talk about that too, because yes, we've done a 21-hour road trip all the way down to South Florida. From New Jersey. From New Jersey. But we took a break um, and, and split it into two trips, so halfway through around the... We stayed over a friend's house in hour South mark, Carolina. We spent the night at a friend's house, right. Um, and a lot of our friends go, how do you do it? You know, how I would be so afraid to be in a car with my kids for that long. There's no way they could sit still through it. And again, you know, I think it all stems back to when do you start them with road trips? You know, we start when our kids are very young, we get them used to one hour, an hour and a half trips. We'll go to Lancaster, we'll go to upstate New York. And um, bit by bit, they start to get used to longer periods of time in the car. Um, we like to take a lot of a frequent amount of stops, I'd say, maybe every couple of hours. Mm -hmm. We'll make a, a rest stop and let them run around, find a playground, and spend some energy. I mean, but for those longer trips, like the Florida, um, what we were doing was really strategizing around sleep schedules. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think the first couple times we went to Florida, we were just left at, like, 10 p.m. So the kids, you know, zonked out in the car, right. and we just... We would drive through the night. Through the so night. for those really long ones, that was what... Yeah. Helped it be a more peaceful ride, I guess. If we had driven during the daytime, just like they 10 would get hours restless. in the car is too much. Yeah. Right. But if they're spending their nights sleeping in the car right. while we're driving, up, we then have breakfast, more reset, peaceful. lunch, reset. And what we've been doing too is playing audiobooks and podcasts, you know, kids' podcasts. Uh, they love the stories podcast. There's a lot of great podcasts out there that they enjoy listening to, and that just really passes the time for them. Yeah, there's so many great things you can do to water, keep your wow, kids' pens. minds busy. Right. We There's this Melissa and Doug water wow pens, and it's this little pen with water in it, and you can paint on these pages, and then the pages turn um, colorful. And when they dry up, they go back to being a black and white image. And our kids love those. It's a no-mess, crafty thing they can be doing in the back seat. Coloring pages little like 20 piece puzzles they like to do sometimes um looking through books and of course listening to the audio books and sometimes we'll play road games with them too you know like i spy um i spy a yellow truck driving by uh and other games like that so all those things help to pass the time um a, a little tip for the adults if you are thinking of driving at night Make sure you are well rested before you start and that you can take turns. We like to do like maybe two, three hour shifts and then when one is driving the other naps. Ice chips are a great thing to have yeah. with you. Pull into McDonald's and ask for ice chips. They're usually free. Yep. And they'll last you a couple hours. There's the best thing to stimulate you really. Um, a cup of ice to keep you alert and you know, 
I mean, I have done also chocolate, you know, eating chocolate, but it hurts your teeth after a while. So the ice chips really are better because they, the coldness kind of gives right. you a... And it hydrates, yeah. It hydrates you and gives you a little extra energy and alertness. So the last thing we really have for you guys today is just our bicycling system. And I'm really proud because we're as a family of five, we can still all go bicycling together. And we have a five-year-old, three-year-old, and zero-year-old. And we're not going slow either. We did a nice, like, I don't know, eight-mile loop uh, the other day, the other weekend, maybe two weekends ago. Um, and how... So we, we have a couple different systems. You know, a lot of people use the trailer system. So it, it hitches to the back of a, a regular standard bike, which is great. Uh, we never got too into that. We really like this We Ride system. And it's basically a seat that mounts right in front of you in between the your your seat and your handlebars. And, you know, a little toddler can go in there. So we had, I think, Alvin, our three-year-old, in, in there with us. And then we had Kaylee. Um, our then nine month old uh, in the ergo baby. Um, so that was kind of cool, just having her in the ergo baby. And then also having um, our, our eldest, our five year old, rode her his own bike. But we also have a co pilot, which is uh, made by the same uh, brand as We Ride. But the co pilot is kind of it hitches to the back uh, wheel, but it, it, it's a geared bike with just one wheel that's hitched to your adult bicycle and they can pedal. So it have, kind of essentially turns a single bicycle into a double bicycle. Yeah. I'm going to be uploading a YouTube video soon of our, our setup because I think it's really cool uh, to be able to take everyone. Um, like I've taken, uh, I take, it's very easy for me to take two kids, um, you know, with the co-pilot and with the Wii ride. Um, but, but yeah, to be able to go out as a family still while they're so young, I think is really cool and something I don't see too often. So. And the other nice thing about it is, you know, you can take a bike ride at an adult biking pace. Um, a lot of times when we have our kids on their own separate bikes on tricycles, we have to go at a slower pace um, to keep up with the youngest. And also that can be a little bit stressful because, you know, you're not in control of where they're going and you've got to constantly be watching. Are they going to pull into the middle of the street when they shouldn't, you know. So when they're all attached onto one central bike that you're controlling as the adult, you know, there's a lot more peace of mind when you're riding uh, to know that your kids are safe because they are right here. They're not gonna veer off the trail on their own little bike somewhere. They're on your bike and you're going at the pace that you wish to go at. So we've really enjoyed that system. We do create quite a spectacle. <laughs> People look at us and they're like, what is that contraption <laughs> going by? But it's a lot of fun and it's really been working for us. And we've been able to keep active and enjoy bike riding together as a family when, you know, before we weren't sure if we'd be able to with such young children. Usually bike riding is something you forgo when you have small children because it you know, it doesn't seem too possible. We put a lot of miles in this summer. We have our, our, where we live has some great biking trails and hiking trails around it, just like blocks away from our house. And so having this system has been a fantastic way of exploring the area. Yeah, I'll put a picture in the show notes. So whoever wants to check it out, feel free. So we hope that we could share some inspiration here for you parents who are out there missing the active lifestyle you, you perhaps used to have and are wondering if you can still have it now that you've got a young one. And um, we're here to let you know that for us, we say that it is definitely possible, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, don't, don't let it hold you back. Share those wonderful hobbies that you have with your children. You know, this is something you absolutely can do together as a family. And I think it's a wonderful time to bond and to teach them healthy ways of enjoying the outdoors together as a family. Right. And start now because, you know, I have dreams to, you know, we have dreams to take our family, um, you know, on a backpacking trip. We want to do like a 12 day backpacking trip in Hawaii. And, you know, I'm not thinking too long from now, but maybe when the youngest is like eight years old or something, we'll do that. And you can do these epic things. I still have a dream to go cross country on a bicycle trip with the kids. Um, so eventually, you know, I'd love to do something like that. And just, um, yeah. Yeah. Just enjoy these activities and know that there is totally a way you can do it with your youngsters and get them learning young to enjoy the great outdoors. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, yeah, get out there. Godspeed.